Every September, people come together from all around the world to raise awareness and challenge the stigma that persists around dementia. September 2021 marks the 10th year of the vital global awareness raising campaign. And today, September 21st, marks the World Alzheimer's Day. Here to talk more about the disease and awareness is Dr. Jessica Swirling, who is the Associate Director Center for the Aging Brain at Montefiore Health System and Associate Professor of Neurology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. How are you today, doctor? Very good. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for, for joining us here today. Now, today is World Alzheimer's Day. Why is it important to have a day and dedicated month to this disease? The disease is pretty prevalent. Uh, by the time it's 2050, there will be 12.7 million people that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. For both the patient and the caregiver, it is an extreme burden of neurodegenerative disease or difficulty with Alzheimer's disease and very important for recognizing this disease and getting support for you during the course of the illness. Thank you. Thank you. And what is Alzheimer's disease and what age are people affected by the disease? Alzheimer's disease is one of the forms of dementia. If you picture a big umbrella, there are other forms of dementia like Parkinsonian dementia, progressive supranuclear palsy, uh, there's vascular dementia, but Alzheimer's disease is one of the most common dementias. It affects memory, it affects other cognitive functions like judgment, attention, difficulty with language, difficulty with navigating. If you picture someone in difficulty with driving, they may have had visual spatial impairments. Extremely important to recognize uh, the different types of symptoms that are associated with this disease. Okay, and can Alzheimer's disease be prevented and what can we do to prevent it? There, there are, there's one therapy that was approved before uh, June 6, 2021. We didn't have any drugs that really attack the underlying pathology associated with Alzheimer's disease or amyloid. And there is some approved treatments right now. Right now we are giving symptomatic treatment uh, for memory issues or behavioral issues, but there are lots to empower patients and families by managing risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, such as your risk factors for heart disease, for stroke, mm. coronary artery disease, diabetes, diabetes and really controlling that, you can control the inflammation associated with Alzheimer's disease and really help to improve your outcomes. In addition, we all, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, the importance of still saying and being creative and saying socially connected is so important. There's a lot of literature out on the uh, friendliness of and helpfulness of leisure activities and connectivity both for the patients and for the caregivers, so important. And uh, you know, as you know, the isolation during this difficult time, it was extremely important for all of us to be creative. And I'm so thankful for the local organizations and community-based organizations that made that happen for my patients and their families. Wow, thank you for mentioning you know, this time we're in right now. It's COVID-19, we're still in a, in a pandemic. Is it any link to COVID-19 and Alzheimer's disease, like any? long-term link? That's a great question. Uh, we are following patients with COVID-19 who are reporting cognitive difficulty longitudinally, mm -hmm. meaning we're following them when they start their complaints. We don't have all the answers yet. Patients are complaining of problems with attention, problems with focusing, brain fog, some similar symptoms to Alzheimer's disease. But there is no direct answer. We really need to learn a lot about this novel disease, its relation to underlying pathology. If it looks like um, Alzheimer's disease pathology with amyloid plaques and tangles. But the importance is, again, the recognition, the awareness for your caregivers or loved ones to recognize that you're having difficulty to really seek medical care so that we can manage like what we discussed before, the vascular risk factors. And we saw that even with COVID-19, that's a large drop driver of morbidity and mortality with our patients. So diabetes, obesity, all of that overlays both diseases and so important. And I would be really remiss if I didn't mention vaccination for COVID-19. So important in the prevention of disease and secular that, that associated with COVID-19 uh, natural immunity. So definitely suggest that everyone with Alzheimer's disease get the vaccine. We're recommending across the board that patients get uh, vaccinated for COVID-19. 
Uh, we're seeing a lot of long-term uh, COVID, and there are historically risk with viral illnesses, again, with memory problems, the pandemic in the early 1900s, there was encephalitis that or brain inflammation that was noted. We see that with herpetic infection. So it's not unusual that a viral illness can cause problems with the brain. And so what's the protection that we have now? We have good evidence for the vaccines against COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. And how can we support our friends, family, and neighbors with Alzheimer's? I would say pay attention. It's coming towards mealtimes. People have started to gather in small groups, pay attention to the meals that they're preparing. If someone was a wonderful cook, and I say this every Thanksgiving, and but Thanksgiving is really should be celebrated every single day or a holiday as we try to uh, meet with other uh, family members. So if you're having dinner and mom or dad or your aunt and uncle was such a wonderful chef, and now it doesn't taste good, it may be that they're forgetting one of the ingredients. It may be that they're having more difficulty. And over the past year, we've been isolated. We may not have noticed the cooking going downhill. You wanna pay attention to that. Put those devices away, really pay attention to the taste of your food and maybe recognize the first sign that there may be some memory difficulty. Because patients with Alzheimer's disease can have difficulty with both planning, executive functioning, the sweet sequence of actions, leaving the stove on, forgetting the ingredients for their favorite meal. Oh, and let's talk more about like your patients and just in general people with Alzheimer's disease. Is there any link to ethnicity and, and race regarding uh, who gets Alzheimer's disease? At our Montefiore Einstein Center for the Aging Brain, or a designated center of excellence for Alzheimer's disease, we really focus on health equity and recognize that there are disparities across diverse populations. We spend a lot of time really providing culturally sensitive evaluations and recognition of this disease. If someone is speaking a different language, I don't want to test them in a language that they're not comfortable with. There are um, referrals to community-based organization, which should be culturally sensitive, because we really want people to follow through and identify with their race, with their ethnicity, so there are appropriate referrals for them to help both the patient and the caregiver because this will help them navigate the disease. I would be remiss if I didn't mention caregiver stress. They exhibit uh, higher levels of hospitalizations, heart attacks, flu, or other illness, viral illnesses, because the stress of caregiving is so real. And from a personal perspective, my uncle passed away. He was taking care of my grandmother with Alzheimer's disease, and he passed away seven years before she did. And the stress of caregiving is so real. So it's important to recognize the disease, get the appropriate referrals in place, know your community, which is we learned so important during this pandemic and really know the agencies that surround you so that patients will actually follow recommendations, feel comfortable, embrace their community, learn about the diversity in the community, embrace this towards health equity, a new path forward. Now in this community, is there any like agencies that the caregivers can go to if they're having like, if they're under stress? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of help. There are hotlines out there. We work very closely with Caring Kind Organization, the Alzheimer's Association. There are care consultations that can be provided. There are support groups for those that have early stage Alzheimer's disease, those that are before the age of 65. And there are support groups in many different languages. At the Montefiore Einstein Center for the Aging Brain, we were providing depression treatment for those that had cognitive impairment, both in English and Spanish, in recognizing that it's really a diverse population with various needs. So we really need to recognize that. And so we work very closely with regional aid for interim care, um, interim needs in the Bronx, the RAIN organization. And it required during the pandemic when patients were faced with problems with social determinants of health, food insecurity, even as a neurologist, we were addressing these uh, social determinants of health on the phone, on telemedicine, because people were so worried and scared that maybe had help in place, like home care in place, and, and folks that were shopping for them that could no longer reach them. So this whole pandemic, even you know not associated with Alzheimer's disease, kept us so honest and so connected to the community. And I again, I can't say how appreciative, how much I appreciate the relationships that we have with our local community-based organizations. Thank you. And how um, how can we stay in touch with the center? for aging brain. 
You can call our hotline, our phone number at 914-375-4880 or go to our website. We're here for both of you and your families. Um, once you uh, make an appointment and you're evaluated us, not only is the direct patient part of our family, but you as a caregiver be become part of our Center for the Aging Green family. And we encourage you to have the courage, if you have any concerns, to start to speak with your primary care doctor and perhaps entertain a referral to the Center for the Aging Brain so that we can help you and your family navigate some of your concerns. And I think you already answered uh, my last and final question, but a message to the community, the Bronx community. There is a lot that you can do and a lot to feel empowered by. The first step is recognition. If you are concerned, speak to a family member, speak to your primary care doctor. There are a lot of ways that we can help you, like I spoke about before. There are uh, treatments for diabetes, for heart disease, recognizing this and how it rolls in with memory impairment. There are resources that, that we can provide for you. There are support for you, both on the phone, virtually, in community centers, and lots of ways to navigate. You are never alone. Uh, the Montefiore Einstein Center for the Aging Brain is here for both you and your families, and we're so thrilled to serve the community. Thank you, Dr. Sperling, for joining us here today. We'll be right back with more Open BXRX Tuesday.